Hello gang, Colin here, Fester 67's workshop, along with... And me, Dave, at Model Maker Dave's workshop. Hello um, everyone. And yeah, this week we are Huey Buddies, because we're doing our Huey, aren't we Dave? We are. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I have a two-tone Huey. Do you want me to put your full screen already, mate? No, no. They, 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 wait, we can say hello to everyone first. Yeah, you got you got the two tone Yui. I've got unmasked this week, mate. I oh, know. Oh, I yeah. may have yeah. I may have flopped the Yui on the bench and took the tape off the windows, mate. Ooh, it's getting close to that. It's yeah, I know, and it's oh. But anyway, without further ado, let's have a looky loo to see who's in the chat. Uh, first in, we've got the lovely Lynn Dittle from the US of A. I uh, hope you've recovered. Hello, uh, I know we don't normally do politics, but I, I hope you've recovered from last night's uh, debate because it was bizarre viewing. We had a watch party last night with the Belgian, mate. And uh, it was the presidential oh. debate. And Dave, I've never seen anything like it, mate. But anyway, that's politics done. Uh, Lynn saying 72 minutes left. And where is everyone? Oh, bless her. And then at 45 minutes, she was humming all by herself. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, Andy's in saying, here we go. Mm. Yeah, we both forgot, didn't we? That it was the end of the month and it was the Yui catch up. So, yeah. yeah. So the normal paddy wagon will return next week, where we'll be carrying on that build. Uh, I've just coming to the end of the artwork, Dave, on the <laughs> fire engine build. Yeah, so that'll be the, the next background build we do. So, um, yeah. If I just look at you and go, I've really stitched you up. So it's Fireman Dave and Officer... Fest, fest. Oh, we're both we're both firemen, mate. But I might have I might have just garnered garnered a bit of stuff to Photoshop, and uh, I'll, I'll pleasantly at me. You, uh, <laughs> you look good as a fireman, mate. Look proper profesh, mate. Why, why, yeah. why does um, Kipper and Stitched Up come in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might you might well have been, mate. <laughs> uh, Andy's saying, hiya, Dr. Pepper, Lynn. Yeah, Lynn's like me. She likes a bit of Dr. Pepper. <gasps> Nectar, mate. Can't say I've ever had any. Oh, Dave, you've got, to get, you've got to get yourself a nice bottle of Dr. Pepper, mate. Bung it in the old fridge and just pour it in a glass and, and just drink it chilled. Oh, it's got... A, yeah. Does it taste better when it's flat? You can you can drink it flat. You can defizz it, mate. Uh, Andy saying, "I wonder whether Dave will be uh, will be Commando Dave or will be Officer Wibble." It's Commando Dave today. Yeah, but uh, Officer Wibble will be back next week. Suffice to say, Officer Wibble is going to make an appearance on my paddy wagon. But anyways, uh, Lynn says she's got Officer Wibble. And he's saying, yeah, uh, Officer Wibble it is. No. Uh, 17 minutes until the Wibbles wobble. Yeah, I mean, I had a Wibble yesterday, Dave, and I was on my own. Oh. Yeah. So it was a solo Wibble. It was. I don't know what I was doing. No, tell a lie. I know what I was doing. I was trying to put some bits and pieces over there, and I kept dropping them. And you know what I'm like when I keep dropping things. And I just got the ump with myself, and yeah. So I may have picked just random things up off the side and just gone drop on it. You might as well go down there with it. Uh, you can go down there with it. Now you're all on the floor, and I walked out and closed my door in a half. Oh, yeah. So it was a proper stroppy wibble. I just got the ump with myself, Dave, because I've been wanting to get on all week, as you know. I've, I'm backed up quite a bit now with me schedule, and I've, I've got, you know, poor old James, bless him. I've got his 
Death Race and Harley Quinn sat there and I wanted to get on with them and, and my hands have not been with it and I've had the twitches and oh mate, so I, yeah, I kind of got the ump in myself yesterday, so oh dear yeah, I just got wound up because I'm conscious of the backlog I've got and I just feel I'm letting people down and yeah anyway, win, whinge over Lynn's saying she better plug my laptop in or her battery will go dead yes Lynn, it'll be flatter than a witch's chest piece do you know what? Absolutely. Uh, Lynn saying hi to Sarah. Uh, Sarah Jane's in, by the way. I do apologise, Sarah, there. Sarah Jane's in saying hi, all. Hi, Sarah Jane. Hope you're Hello, all right. Sarah Jane. Everything's okay out there. Uh, I think, uh, if I'm right, I think Sarah Jane's in America as well. I could be right. <laughs> Is it New York State or the, that area? I don't know now. I can't remember. Uh, she said, Lynn, talked with my sister today as it's her birthday. Uh, she's done her family tree for years. Excuse me. I asked what she suggests. Can I email you? So it's obviously a convo going on there between the two girls. Oh, yep, yep. Family tree stuff. Yeah, that's, that's uh, interesting stuff, that is. Oh, yeah. My missus has been doing it with her, her family and that, tracing it back because she recently lost her mum, as we know. And... Uh, uh, she kind of just wanted to learn more about her family, like, you know. And, yeah. It's interesting stuff, mate. Mm -hmm. uh, what we got there? Andy saying hello to Sarah Jane, who said to Lynn, I'm not. I emailed Prime Time and he can give you my email, though. I told him to. Nice. Uh, Sarah Jane's asking Andy what's cooking. Is it something wonderful? It's bound to be. Mm -hmm. He's saying, not today, Sarah Jane. I have to hit the shops later for that. Don't know what to have for dinner, to be honest. Beans on toast. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know whether you're getting it up your end, Dave, but we've got the panic buyers doing their thing again at the moment. Um, I think at the moment, we're all right. But I haven't been yeah. Too, so. yeah, they've put extra people in now that are going around and just saying to people, look, if you don't mind, you know, there's no need for this. And uh, and it's it's been done, how can we say, in slightly lower lower voices as a nudge, nudge, wink, wink, don't you think? But yeah. I think it will get to the point where they go, yeah, I'm going to put that there. But yeah, and I think it's a good thing because there's no need for it. It's enough for everyone, isn't no, it? Let's no, be honest. It's enough for everyone because it's there's enough to go around. Otherwise, it will yeah. be back to what it was before. Well, there's nothing worse, like you say. You know, someone's been in in the nursing ward for sixteen, eighteen hours, and they come come to their supermarket and they're staring at a load of bare metal. That's that's soul destroying. Their job's stressful enough as it yeah. is. So come on, let's. Turn it in, folks. Anyway, Mike's in. Scaly Models. Hello, Mike. Hope the lovely Eileen is doing okay, mate, or as well as can be. And uh, keep plying her with a fudge, mate. And, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Send, me, uh, send her one of my uh, virtual hugs, mate. Uh, he's also saying hello to Carl and Davey. Bless him. Uh, Sarah Jane's got a good suggestion here, Dave, on the food front. She says, can I suggest a 12-inch Mighty Pizza with a kebab meat and chips for starters? You can buy, of course, uh, but I'm told you are a gent. Yeah, absolutely. Ooh. Yeah, it's got a nice value. Oh, I like that suggestion. Kebab meat. Oh, and chips. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Is that, is that skinny chips or proper fat chips? Would you have a Would you have a, a side order of onion rings and garlic bread, Dave, just there for the sake of... Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. And some chicken nuggets. Oh, good shout. Sarah Jane saying hi to Mike over at Scaly Models. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to any of these channels, folks, do remember, pop over and see the folks. Uh, a lot of them are logged in as their YouTube user details, so that will be their channel. Excuse me. Uh, that was me just saying setting up. Uh, that's Dave saying hello to everyone. Uh, Andy's asking Sarah Jane, is that one pizza or two then? You could always have a nice pizza sandwich. Two flip, different flavors yeah, together. Yeah, flip the top one over as a different flavor, and then you cut the two slices, and you get a double whammy, Dave. Oh, could you imagine that, though, with 
evenly applied rashers of bacon between with brown sauce. Right, I'm off. <laughs> 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 not a bad suggestion that dave is it yeah 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 i, I know what dave's going to be doing uh andy saying hello to me and uh sergeant Co hello sergeant colin even uh and he's saying hello officer wibble to dave <laughs> uh, sarah jane's going okay make it to uh oh there yeah. mighty meaty and a new yorker please with the usual starter it's called an S special here. Oh, have we got a have we got a roundup of ingredients there, Sarah Jane? Only that that does sound rather rather it nice. Uh, Lynn saying hi, Colin, my love. Tell Ellen hi. I will do, Lynn. I'll pass on your sentiments, and I haven't forgotten, darling. We will tie up. Just ping me when you're about. Uh, hi, Dave, or I mean, Officer Wibble. <laughs> See, they've got you sus now, Dave. But I don't wibble. I don't. What? <laughs> I don't wibble. Right, of course you don't. So that 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 night that you stomped into your kitchen and your chair spun round so fast that I thought it was the Olympic flame at the bench. That's got nothing to do with it. that. weren't a wibble, no. No, that was me going to get put the kettle on. You know, that curtain was like a magician's curtain on stage. It just wafted up and he was gone. It, you could hear him in the kitchen like like Dick Dastardly. He was... <laughs> and then his head popped through and he went, and another thing and all he went. And he had another moan. So, yeah. <sighs> Nat's in saying, hi, everyone. Hello, Nat. You all right, my darling? No, no Nat. Uh, and he's going, hoddy ho, Nat. I think that might have been Heidi Ho. Or Hody Ho. Uh, Lynn saying hi, Nat. Hi, Paige and hi, Connor. Yeah, hi, Paige and Connor, if you're in. Big oh. wave. Uh, Lynn saying, Sarah Jane, I've emailed Phil. So it's obviously something they got going on in the background there. Ooh. Nat's going, hi, Andy Pandy and Lynn. <laughs> Andy Pandy, God, that's Andy. going back. Yeah. Where's Lo who's, who's Loopy Lou? <laughs> uh, oh, I think that'd have to be Nat, wouldn't it? Loopy Lou. <laughs> uh, Jacqueline's in afternoon. She says back from taking Mum out for her birthday meal. Happy Ooh. birthday! Happy birthday, Jacqueline's mum. Yeah, hope uh, she had a good time. Nanny's birthday, isn't it? Hey, hey. Hello, yeah. Mum. Hello, Mum. Yeah. Oh, hang on. <coughs> Go on, go on. Uh, Lynn saying hi, Dad. Uh, still che uh, checking on my wingnut wings package. She's called the post office and delivery side will look into it and call me back. So to be continued. Don't forget, though, Lynn, there are big delays. I mean, I've been waiting three and a half months now for the next stages of my big Rossi bike. And bear in mind where the world's been on fire, all the processing and everything backlogged where people mm. were were sent home. So. What, Just when, bear that in mind. When when you get your next lot of parts for your bike, you'll get loads. Oh, yeah, yeah. They've emailed me continually throughout, and what they're going to do is they're going to amalgamate all the orders so that it comes right back up to date, mate. So Ooh. I am in for a rather large package to be delivered. So, yeah, I reckon I could get a couple of episodes out of that. All right, and you'll get about two or three. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to it. It's been nice to have a rest from it, though, Dave, in a way, because it's just let me pick it up and put it on the bench and go, right, so this soundboard's going to go in there. And that. so I've already oh. worked out what bits I'm going to pop back off just to put and conceal wires in and that. So it's given me a chance to think of that. So you've been doing some upgrade planning. I have. I'm going to put in, for those that don't know, I'm building a big one-fourth scale Rossi bike. It's about that big. Big. Brum, brum. I think I could sit on it and do a lap with the man cave. Uh, about the size of a mini moto pocket bike. And uh, I've decided that I'm going to put a soundboard in and all of that lot and then have it so that you can turn the throttle and it'll rev the engine. So I'm just sorting out where all the wires are going to run and i need all the bits so that i can see what the handlebar assembly is like whether i can conceal wires inside and yeah 
Uh, Sarah Jane's going. That sounds great. Andy Tart. Uh, Sarah Jane. Uh, Nat saying hello to Sarah Jane. Who's saying hi back to Nat. Lynn saying, uh, Mr. Fox is so cute. That's uh, the little fox that Jackie's been crocheting. I saw it on the uh, Facebooks last night. Oh, it's cute, Dave. So hopefully if Jacqueline puts that in the album, we can have a cute alert this week. I yeah. oh, no. Hey, you get to see your school photograph, don't you, mate? Hey, hey, yeah. <clears throat> Moving on, Sarah Jane's going, it's her sister's birthday today, happy birthday to Sarah Jane's sister, Lynn Dipple saying, tell your sister happy birthday, Jacqueline saying, uh, yes Nat, only just touched the salmon, oh, chat jump there, let's scroll back up, Cool, oh, Bennett, there it is, Lynn's going, and away we go, we are a bit behind on the chat, I know. Uh, model making my name, saying hi, Jackie, Mr. Fox. Paul Shaplin's in, saying afternoon all. Afternoon, Paul. I hope you and Sue are doing all right, mate. Hello, Paul. As people uh, saying hello to Paul. Uh, Scout model Vamp is in from South Africa. Hello, Vamp. hope you're doing all right, Geese. Hey, Fabri. And uh, everything's going all right down there, mate. Frankie goes to Wobby Woods in. Hello, Frankie. All right, mate. Yeah, hello, Frankie. Uh, there's people saying hello to Frankie. Archie's in Common Road Junction. Hello, Archie. Hello, Archie. Oh, Arch Archie won't mind me saying, but he's going to be spoiling us soon with his, uh, his first video build for his channel. So if you need anything, mate, you know where we are. We'll help you out, mate. Frankie saying hello to Nat, Lynn and Andy. Nat saying hi to Vampy. Uh, Archie's asking how we're keeping. Fine, dandy and seriously windswept, mate. Hmm. Uh, Andy saying, Fireman, Hugh Pugh, Dan McGrew, Cuthbert, Dibble and Grub. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Saying that, though, we are looking forward to the old fire engine build, isn't we, Dave? It's going to yeah, be a it's, big one. It, 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 yeah. <clears throat> it's a bit of a lump, isn't it? It is. And I know Shane, I think it's Shane Young's that's got one as well. And he, he's keen on uh, when we're going to start it. Oh, is he going to do a build along, is he? I think so, yeah. I'll ping him and find out what's happening. But uh, Nat saying hello to everyone from Connor. Hello, Connor, mate. How you doing, mate? Hello, Connor. Uh, Andy saying hello to Connor and Paige. Vamp saying hello to Dex, Mayhem, and Lynn. People saying hello to Connor there. Lynn saying Dr. Pepper. <laughs> uh, uh, Plastic Monkey saying hello to Connor and Paige. Uh, I'm getting told off by model making Mayhem. No, 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 you don't let anyone down ever. Yeah, I know, mate, but I get myself in a bit of a knot every now and then, mate. and Luckily, I've got his lordship next to me there that tells me to wind me neck in. So. But, yeah, I do get myself in a bit of a two and eight, if I'm honest. Uh, Mama Smurf's in. Say hello, everyone. Hi, Mama Smurf. Hello, Mama Smurf. Uh, Nat saying, I'm just imagine Colin and Dave with the Dr. Pepper theme tune with the slogan, what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what is the I worst like? that can happen with us two reprobates? Eh? <sighs> yeah. Watch this space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Nat saying hello to Tanya, a.k.a. Mama Smurf. Chop Suey's in. Hello, everyone. Hello, Chop Suey. Hope you're doing hello, all right. Uh, people saying hello to Chop Suey, Mama Smurf. Sarah Jane's going... Bletchley, you what's it? Good old England, matey. Yeah. Chop Suey saying uh, hello to Dexterous Crafter and Mama Smurf. Uh, Archie saying kind of like shut that light out situation, but in the shops. Yeah. Uh, Sticky's in, Richard, uh, my cousin. Hello, mate. How you doing? I hope you're doing all right. 
Oh, Muse is in as well, saying, uh, I think I'm here. Oh, Muse, you've got to have your morning coffee. Yeah, good girl. Uh, Joseph Kelly's in, saying hello to everyone. Hello, Joe. You all right, mate? Uh, Vamp is going, and there's his Musey. Yeah, Muse and Vamp are a, th a thing. They won't mind me saying. And, yeah, oh, it was lovely. Oh, bless him. Yeah, Mama Smurf's going pizza sandwich. Yum. It is. I know. I've got him going now. Sarah Jane's going chips. Chin, chips are the fat ones. The skinny ones are fries with onion rings and lots of sauce. Good girl. Very good girl. Lynn's saying hi to Muse. I hope you are here or are at least trying to be crawling out of bed. Yeah. <laughs> Knowing Muse, she's tucked up all nice with the duvet. Oh, oh yeah, but a cup of child giving it the old slurpy slurp with one eye open, going, Oh, we'll get up in a bit. <laughs> Isn't it morning already? Yeah, blowing a kiss to Vampy. Uh, Malcolm saying, Good afternoon, gents. Have you got rain? Yeah, we got a bit of a, a bit of a rainstorm going on out there, mate. Yeah, it's, um, yeah. Yeah. Piddling down. Lynn saying hello to Malcolm. Uh, Malcolm in the proper lingo is going sausage sandwich for tea. I oh, know. Ooh. Ooh. I know. Nom noms. With the correct sauce, I hope, Malcolm. Yeah. Uh, Nat saying they've only got a bit of light drizzle up there at the moment. Uh, yeah, we was right about Muse. Nah, she's not out of bed yet, Lynn. She's all she's all tucked up, mate. Wrapped up like a little sausage roll, bless her. <laughs> uh, nope. Archie's saying, yeah, Dave Grass isn't green. Oh, Sarah Jane there's going to an SJ special is kebab meat and chips starter with 12-inch mighty meaty and New York pizzas. <gasps> How much is a flight? There's going to be space, isn't there? There's going to be plenty of space on the old aeroplanes at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Road trip to Sarah Jane's via the British Airways, I reckon, didn't you, mate? Well, she's only pledged then. Yeah. Uh, Lynn saying the post office told me that it was delivered on Monday. Oh, dear. I've not left it with a neighbour or done what they normally do here. They go, it's been left in a safe place, which is right in the middle of the street so everyone can see it. Uh, that's why I got my uh, Dropbox around the corner But it's annoying They know it's there But a lot of them They'll stand the parcel On top of the Dropbox Dave. Go figure Yeah Yeah I'm having trouble with that one uh, Model making mayhem's going I'm a bit of a dark horse All this techno wizardry Yeah I know Tomfoolery and witchcraft mate Joseph Kelly saying, hi, Lynn, am I wrong? Or did you say you're building an army air surface spad? Because he's doing one as well. <laughs> Muse is doing a zombie walk over to the coffee pot. Muse, you need to get your teas made, mate. Right in the cabinet, just next to you. So you just move one arm out of the, out of the duvet. <laughs> Switch it. I mean, mine's an automatic one. So the alarm will wake me up. And it... it Pours itself into the teapot, so I just reach over. I'll get the teapot, pour it in. Oh, day proper, yeah. Muses like, sounds like a good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, Vamp is going fishnets. All about the fishnets, mate. I've got them to do on Harley Quinn yet. Uh, Muses going, ha ha. Uh, Joseph Kelly's ordered a wing nut wings. Oh no, Lynn saying this. Uh, Joseph, what she ordered? She ordered the wing nut wings, sop with camel. It's the one I'm talking to post office about. Yeah, it's a nice kit though, Lynn. It'll turn up, darling. Paul Lyons is in. Hello, Paul. How you doing, Hello. mate? Uh, Sarah Jane says. I said I'm in Bletchley because you said I'm in New York or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
uh, I'm doing pretty damn good. Thank you, Dex. Says Vampy. Osrich 9000 saying it's very moist in Cheshire today. Yeah. Uh, Andy saying Ostrich 9000 moist. Yeah. Moist. Yeah, it may have, may have been a bit of a Monday <coughs> night. Monday night chaos. Uh, Malcolm saying curry sauce in the sandwich. Sorry, no disrespect, man. I had a bit of curry sauce. Well, that's something different, Dave, isn't it? Yeah, curry sauce is good. Yeah. Uh, Vamp is going moist. Paul Lines is saying, Sarah Jane, that kebab and pizza all sounds like a starter to me. <coughs> uh, da, da, da. Andy saying, uh, only one word equal to moist is squelch. Squelch. Uh, Music saying it's across the room, Co. Oh, Musicians. Oh. That's because you've got to do the zombie walk. Yeah, Vamp's going, don't make her lazy. I'm just trying to help her out, mate. I thought, well, if she can have a cup of tea here, just to to refresh her while she sort of, oh, yeah, I'm wide awake type thing, and then build herself up graciously for the walk of doom where she's got a zombie walk to get ready, yeah? Mm. And she's saying, yeah, good luck with that, laugh out loud. Mm. (laughs) So... It's that time, Dave. That's the chat all caught up. Mm-hmm. So uh, I suppose we'd better start doing something, didn't we, really? Because, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to switch over to me, uh, me other cameras, get that sorted out. I'll open my window and all because I forgot to open it. And it's a bit hot in here. So that's where I'm, I'm at at the moment. So I'll just do me window. So apologies for any background noise, folks. Oh, dear. Oh, yeah, it's proper hoon in it down, Dave. Well, it, when I left work, it was just about thinking about spitting with rain. And by the time I pulled up on, on my parking spot at home, it was absolutely nerfing it down. Yeah. Yeah, it's giving it a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's switch my light on as well. There you go. Right. I've got the chat on the bench this week with a, a provisional tryout as to whether that will work. <laughs> But it's the world's smallest chat window, but I'll give it a go. All right, uh, got me wet palette just to the side, so I'll be putting a bit of. I think I'll be doing a bit of the old bullets. Bullets. Yeah, I've got the double guns, in I, on the side of the gunship, so I've got a bit of bit of bulletage going on. I'm in I'm in that detail painting stage, Dave. Because I've unmasked all my windows and everything during the week. No, I've, I've still got to do said masking, but I'm I'm kind of working on the the tail end at the moment. Yeah, you're doing all your pre-shading, isn't you, mate? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if I like what I've sprayed on or what I've painted on. Oh, Straight right. on looks a bit. Yeah. Well, no, it might work. I think it's I'm going to be. you prefer it, isn't it? At the end of the day, it's how you prefer it to look, isn't it? But the other side, we're doing sort of a bit more of um, a bit slower, but with a brush rather than. Uh, Wilma's in. She says she's going to be on and off this afternoon. She's watching Boris. Oh, dear. What's Boris up to, Wilms? Have we got more um, restrictions then? or I'm not aware. I mean, I watched the US. I watched the uh, CNN coverage last night of the uh, presidential debate in America and yeah, it's a tough one out there at the moment. It it degenerated a bit, but hopefully they both are over that for the next one and people can start getting an idea of what they're both going to try and do. So, Oh, what's this? The up, opening salvos in the next presidential, uh, the, the, when they go to the 
do the big voting thing? Uh, yeah, it, it kind of got a bit personal, you know, and I think it was expected to happen, but, you know, Donald was Donald and, and you know, Joe Biden tried to deflect it as best as he could and it, it just got a bit, for an outsider like me, you know, it's perfect because I'm a neutral, you know, but I can imagine the guys, uh, folks in the US were feeling a little bit hard done by because at the end of the day, you're going to be the leader of the free world, aren't you? Let's be honest. And let's just deal with issues. Let's not make it a personal slanging match on live TV because I felt it belittled both of them, if I'm honest. Yeah, but I think that's that's him all over, though, isn't it? You can imagine him in his own boardroom. Well, yeah, I mean, we get a very... Um, I, would, I, I probably would say biased news coverage, don't we? Because he's never been particularly liked, has he, by the press? And I don't know what the reasons are, and I don't particularly care, if I'm honest. But... I don't know whether he's been bad, bad, or good, good, because I don't really follow too much the issues in the US, you know, because I don't live there, but... Um, don't, don't know, not really. Must admit, I try and <coughs> stay well, clear of politics as best I can. Yes, I mean, we've got our own version, haven't we, at the end of the day, so... Yeah. But yeah, it's a challenge, I must admit. Uh, Muses going, yeah, it was a pathetic joke, not a debate. Yeah, it was. It was difficult viewing. I mean, from what I can remember, I think the last lot of big debates I watched were Obama when he was looking for election. Uh, I only saw snippets of the ones with Hillary from the last election. And I remember that he, George W. Bush, Bill Clinton ones, or was it George H. W. Bush and Bill Clinton? I can't remember now. It might have been H. W. And, uh, you know, the format that Bill Clinton used, I thought was quite interesting because he, he went for that, let's have it as a walk over to the audience and let them feel they're getting to know me personally. And it was quite radical for... Uh, a presidential debate out there and yeah but last night i just i cringed a bit if i'm honest because i thought all the leaders for the how can we say countries that are not fans of the u.s must have been rubbing their hands together um. Sounds like a couple of school kids arguing in the playground then. Yeah. So yeah. But anyway, that that was that. But um. uh yeah, she's off watching Boris. Uh Lynn saying I watch it here and there in between commercials. She's doing CSI New York and I thought parts of what I saw was a joke. Yeah, it's It's the it's the people I feel sorry for the American people at the at the end of the day because yeah. you know that that's what matters. It's real life at the end of the day. Let's not beat about the bush here. You know this impacts everyone's life, and yeah, I just think it's a bit wrong. But anyway, at risk of going into a wibble wire, I'll be good. But, I mean, we're lucky. Well, I mean, we had it with our election for a bit, didn't we? And people just switched off. Yeah. So they, they reeled it in, didn't they? Because they were like, okay, this isn't working. The British people are telling us they don't want to know. You know, when you've got politicians walking down the street trying to engage the public and the public are just turning their back on them. It's difficult, isn't it? You can't cover that in the press. No. So, yeah, perhaps that's what they need to do out there, mate. I want to make Huey noises, Dave. Well, I'm, I'm going to put a question to everybody. All right. 
why is it that beans on toast tastes good but beans on toast with cheese tastes even better but when you have beans on fried bread why is that so so yummy because I had beans on fried bread for breakfast this morning and it was yeah oh was it proper yeah was it soldiers no it was two half or a slice cut in half down the, down the middle on the diagonal nice good choice But it half tastes good. Uh, Mark's in saying hi, peeps. Hello, Mark. Uh, Muse is saying it's all good. I can be in another country after an hour drive. You on the border, are you, Muse? Sounds like it. Good girl. So the other question is, what has everybody got on their benches? Yeah, what, and what? what are you guys working on? Yeah, and what's in their bellies? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm running out of bench space now. I've got too much on the go again. I need to... You need to wind it in and just concentrate on small bits. Yeah, I've got so many bits and bobs on the go now it's like yeah it'll come good oh yeah always does you know it just needs a, a solid week of yeah Uh, yeah, I get in this stage quite often. It's like, really? Every time I tell myself not to, and it's like, yeah, I'm back at that stage again. It's like, really? When will I learn? The only downside with what we're doing today, though, Dave, I'm finding is it's... It's bringing us closer, isn't it, to the yeah, but, to the end? Yeah, it's. I know it's. I know it sounds daft, but I, I really don't want this one to finish. No. I think it's. Well, it's the it's the kit that started off the buddy builders anyway. Yes. And. I think we've enjoyed it far more than I think we first thought we would. Oh, yeah. I was getting laughed at. People going, you've got a 124 Fury. Ha, 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 ha. And it's like, yeah, okay. I like, I like the Huey, though. It's a nice kit. I think a lot of people say it's a bad kit because they've heard everybody else say it's a bad kit. Yeah. And they've kind of followed the crowd like sheep. Oh, yeah, shepherds and sheep, isn't it? <clears throat> and really what I think a lot of them should have done is just gone out and bought the kit and tried it for themselves. Yeah. Rather than relying on someone else. Yeah, it, it, excuse me, it is one of them, isn't it, at the end of the day? It's, yeah. uh, Lynn saying, Belly, Golden Graham, Serial, uh, Benches, The Metal, Earth, Star Trek Enterprise. Uh, let's have a, a quick looky loot, see what people have got. Da, 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 Lynn, uh, oh, hang on, Lynn. Flip up. Use, you're gone. I'm just flipping my lenses up so I can see what's written in chat. <laughs> oh, right. Uh, Muse is saying, close enough. I know, I know all the words to O Canada in three languages. <laughs> uh, good girl. Candy Grandpa Mun goes in. Hello, mate. He's saying, uh, I now know what I'll be having for dinner in about seven hours. Beans on toast. Yum. Ooh. 
Yeah, nothing wrong with a bit of beans on toast. Andy, Andy saying Worcester sauce in bolognese, chili, mince in tatties, shepherd's pie, cottage pie, lasagna. Yum. Ooh, nice. Uh, Paul Lines, uh, belly, bangers, mash, bench, 72nd, Ooh. Italieri, golf, war, tornado. Oh, very nice. 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 Bangers and mash. Oh. Uh, Lynn's doing that song. Beans, beans, they're good for your heart. Yeah. <laughs> the more you eat, the more you fart, the more you fart, the better for your heart, so eat more beans. <laughs> Thing is, I can imagine her singing that and then her parrot tweeting in tune. Yeah. Uh, Vamp is going absolutely nothing on the bench. Uh, I've got some proper South African uh, bitong, or biltong even, and a decent brandy and coke in me tummy. Oh, brandy. Uh, all because two days of moving and finally settled in a new place. Uh, yeah, back soon then, mate. Brilliant. Ooh. About to hear you got yourself moved in and it's all sorted out. Oh, yeah, he'll be now frantically running around setting the bench up because it'd be like, yeah, withdrawal symptoms, mate. Oh, yeah, I'll bet. Uh, Mark saying stew and three slices of bread, followed by 3D printer on the bench repairing it after someone broke it. Only two oh. folks in my house and it wasn't me. Ah, oh, sorry to hear that, Mark. Ah, so was it the fairy from the bottom of the garden? Uh, yeah, but mine's been working its little socks off this week because it had its maintenance done. And I've had that one going. I've had the resin printer going. Been curing everything as well, as you know. And it's just like, yeah, proper little production line. So oh, you've been going flat out, have you? Yeah, because I've kind of been a bit twitchy, haven't I? So I thought, oh, when I get like that, I just go on to the 3D print stuff and play catch up on that. And it just let, helps you feel you're doing something, doesn't it? Uh, sorry, Pa, clicked off your chat there, mate. Uh, he was saying he's taught his seven-year-old daughter that rhyme and her mother's not impressed with me. Yeah, I can remember when I taught both my boys some uh, rather strong playground tunes and my missus gave me that folded arm look down the nose, you know. It was, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, Joseph saying, Dave, with bacon, ham, steak, spam, sausages. Oh, hey, what? Sorry. Joseph Kelly is saying, Dave, with bacon, ham, steak, spam, or sausages. Both. Mm. Mm. Do you know what? I could probably stack a whole sandwich up with all of it. Yeah, do a proper shaggy sandwich, mate. Uh, Archie is in the belly. He's got bourbon biscuits. Ooh. Bench is a 30 second scale Spitfire mark 22 stroke 24. Uh, Muse is going yummy. Uh, Built on. Jacqueline's going. I've just started the first one out of three NHS Hero Ball Bears. She's got an order. Happy days, Ooh. Jacqueline. Good Keeping you. you busy. Bless you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And Jacqueline can be found uh Jacqueline Crochet Art. So yeah. And she's got a YouTube channel and all. And oh mate, she's probably going for it now, Dave, isn't she? Oh, I know. Yeah. Well, very nearly didn't want that paintbrush then. Are you still chucking stuff about? Yeah, of course I am. When ain't I, eh? Mm. Yeah, still chucking stuff about, Dave. So, yeah, I was digging this, this off the shelf earlier, and I was, like, right next to the fire engine box, and I'm like, oh, not long. I am looking forward to that fire engine, though. Oh, yeah. It's good in a way that we've got another one that is going to be almost a love affair again, isn't it? Mm. You know, and uh, we need that, don't we? Because this Huey has been really uh, an oh, adventure. Been, yeah. And the, the other adventure that I am looking forward to is when I start my double-deck bus build. Yes, yeah. 
I'm not entirely sure when I'm going to start that, but it's, it's going to be one of those um, back burner builds, you know, where you, you, you do a bit and then you put it away. Oh, yeah. I mean, I go by what uh experience i had with mine i thoroughly enjoyed it mate so yeah why not not quite sure what posters i'm gonna have on it well i just put my favorite bands and movies on mine It's funny, someone else is building one at the moment and I've got a message off of them about the decals. And I said, yeah, that's what, what I went with. So it is my most rivet counted build. Really? I went, oh, yeah. I said, but, you know, I made it quite apparent when I first started it, that's how I was going to do it. But a few of the purists didn't appreciate it, but hey. It's not on their shelf, is it? Exactly. I've, I've never understood that side of it as to why people get so wound up over a plastic kit because it's a, it's a plastic kit at the end of the day. Yeah. It's not as if you've built a real tank in your garden, is it? You know what I mean? Or, or gone and got a, a super rare vehicle you know like a classic car and painted it pink with dots on it it's a plastic model kit and yet people get so agitated and it's like why mm, they, 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 they say oh the, the wheels are not right or uh, yeah the, the nose cone is is not Pointy enough, or whatever. The wrong, the wrong shade of Dunkle Gilb. <laughs> oh, yeah, <gasps> yeah, you know, and you're like, oh, yeah, uh, you know, it's oh that that particular thing's got the wrong kind of footprint on it. There would have been a bit of paint missing from here, or this, or that. And I'm like, yeah, don't get me wrong. If you're doing, if you're doing something that is supposed to be photographically accurate. I suppose there's room for it, but most of us don't. Most of us just build because we love to build and to still get a lot of that rivet counting and, and all of that. It just gets gets on your nerves, doesn't it? Yeah. I think some people forget the line where it says, this is a hobby. <laughs> yeah. That's all it is at the end of the day, mate. Yeah. A very enjoyable hobby. I wouldn't be... I'd, I'd be kind of lost without it, to be honest with you. But there are times when you think, oh, come on, folks. Celebrity. Yeah. Uh, Lynn's going, oh no, rivet counting. Yeah. Well, that's a phrase I haven't heard before. Uh, Muse is saying, yeah, they get their fur in a bunch over stupid crap. Yeah, it's, it's really strange. I mean, I don't know whether you've had much rivet count in, in, in your builds, but I certainly have. I'm, whether or not that's personal, because people perhaps, I don't know, don't like the accent or don't particularly like me, I don't know. And I don't really, really care, to be quite honest with you. Um, can't, can't, I wonder, I've, had a, I've had a few that have said, um, oh, that's not right, and that's not right, and that's the wrong colour. And I sort of fired back at them and said, well, hang on a minute. It's a vehicle that was outside during World War II, so it had Mother Nature doing its work all over it. 
yeah. tell me what the right colour shade is because as soon as it comes out of the factory, it's being attacked by Mother Nature. So. Oh, yeah, I've got rivet canted on my cat build and I just pointed out to the person, you do realise this isn't real. The whole idea of what if. You know, and I'm like, really? Oh, no. You know, there, there would be a few more mud splashes here or a few bits of wear there and i'm like well how would you know that it doesn't exist but yeah you know i mean i just found it strange you know it's constructive criticism doesn't hurt anyone don't get me wrong but when it's uh, yeah i just think that there's a time and a place Uh, Chopsu is saying he's got a B52G on the bench. A oh. uh, little bit more body work to be done, and he's going to hopefully put it all together today. Oh, mm. look forward to seeing that. Oh. Uh, Mark's going, Fester, is that the stair that's just a step away from the rolling pin round the back of the head? Oh, yeah, you know the one, mate. <laughs> it's it's the stare I get if I loiter in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jacqueline Staines. Uh, still no Lewis and Diamond art, though. Yeah, I know. Shoddy, isn't it? I reckon that's why he's not into this afternoon, because he knows I'm going to pick him up on it. <laughs> I think he's working, mate. And he's normally away during the week. Uh, Muse is going to have to be sure they all have a swear jar. Absolutely, got to have a swear jar. <laughs> Lynn's going, she would like to have a 48 scale, but where would she put it? Yeah. Hang it from the ceiling. Mate. Mind you, though, you've got a couple of perfect grades in your Lynn, a couple of the big falcons. So where are you going to put them? Whole lines was going would probably small need a small aircraft hangar for a 48 scale B 52. Oh, yeah, definitely. Chop two is going, Lynn. It's a 70 second scale. I'm still trying to figure out that myself, but it's fun to build. Uh, Malcolm's got one there saying, back in the day, railway manufacturers would employ riveters to put in their rivets, either paid by the rivet or paid by the hour. So each logo has a different amount of rivets. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah Jane's got a great comeback. It's her model and it's always correct no matter what I do with it. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Archie's going, yeah, that's fine, Vamp. It's your model, but some people complain about uh, about that. We always say, it's my layout. If you don't like it, then, uh, yeah, uh, go forth and multiply. Uh, mm -hmm. I normally bat it back going, well, when you build your own one and put it up on your channel, I'll sit and watch it and see whether you do it correct then. Because it's normally people that have got a channel but zero content that are the worst, mate. Lynn's going, yeah, that stair run away. Oh, yeah, I got turfed out last week, didn't I, Dave? Quite yeah. unceremoniously. Uh, Van I, I am going into the kitchen to get myself a cup of tea. I'll tell you what, you scurry back so fast, you've been looking like <laughs> out of the trap. Uh, Vamp is saying once he's got his new bench set up the way I want it, I'll go out of my way to put a McLaren's with a Mazda rotary engine just to pee off the rivet counters. <laughs> yeah, we 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 did it with Ferrari. I built a Ayrton Senna McLaren liveried Ferrari and it went down like a lead balloon, mate. Yeah, and I did a what was it? I did a Mercedes in Ferrari colors, yeah, and uh, yeah. I actually had someone from a Facebook group. Uh, saying how much of a fan they were of Ayrton Senna and what a wonderful job I had done on the McLaren MP4. And I'm like, you can't be that much of a fan because it's Nigel Mansell's Ferrari. So, yeah. 
Ooh. And of course, we got the look of the Sergeant Bones because he's in the Tafosi, isn't he? The Ferrari supporters. And every now and then I get the thousand yard stare if I mention it. So it's good fun. <clears throat> Frankie's going, he's got the Audi R8 engine on his bench and an apple tart in his belly. Oh, Lynn's going, she's got no idea where she's going to put them Falcons. I'm thinking about giving one away. Oh, happy days. You know my address, Lynn. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, Malcolm's going, model for heroes, do a rivet counter challenge uh, at model shows. Uh, it's very popular. It's like, guess the sweets in the jar. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's one of those unique things, Dave, isn't it? Because there are builders out there that do, you know, photorealistic, um, historically accurate stuff. And don't get me wrong, you know, if that's their niche, fine. And then they go, you know, if anyone's got any critique, please fire it out. Then they're asking, aren't they? So, mm. you know, that's when people can release their inner nerd. There's a time and a place. But when it's average Joes like us lot, just building because we like to build and it's going on our shelf in our own. I just think, really. Well, I suppose we ask for it because we are putting a lot of our content on YouTube. So you're going to get it, aren't you? So. Yeah. No, I suppose, yeah, you are kind of opening yourself up for... Yeah. Uh, yeah, Vamp's going, Mansell was Ferrari. Yeah, I know he was. I said I did Nigel Mansell's Ferrari Vamp as Ayrton Senna's McLaren. Mm. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'd love to have seen old Sarge's face when he saw that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's saying she was watching Boris. Yeah, he's busy working, bless him. And watch this space for a hilarious video of, uh, from Lewis in regards to what Postman Pat has bought. Oh, dear. Uh, Vamp's going, how about we do a buddy build and take some really nice British classic cars and do a Hello Kitty competition? <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like his thinking, mate. I, like, I do, honestly. It's, it's one of those, in it, where you would choose the ultimate British classic car that is steeped in heritage, and you just go completely. Ooh, that, that's got to be Bentley Jaguar or an Aston, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be like the Bent Bentley Blower, but do it in Alfa Romeo colours or something. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, yeah, I like your thinking there, Vamp. You might be onto something there, mate. We'll we'll keep he, that. In mind. He's got something there. Oh, he's a sly fox, mate. I'll give him that. Yeah, I like his style. It's like, yeah. Uh, Candy Graham saying, hi, Nat. Looking forward to um upcoming video. Uh, Mark's going, I can send my address to Lynn. Yeah, yeah. I think Lynn's going to get inundated with addresses now, mate. Yeah. She can have so many. She's not going to know what to do. Absolutely. Uh, Muse is going, yeah, it's like the tribute I'm planning for my grandfather's service. It's going to be as accurate as I can make it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you're doing something there that is, you know, well, it's also uh, you're going to want it right. And the ultimate rivet counter in that, Muse, is going to be yourself because you know what you're trying to achieve. And that's fine, you know, but. Uh, yeah, I'm getting told that Mansell drove a Ferrari. Yeah, I know he did. I, <laughs> I did say that. <laughs> yeah, I did out and send as McLaren, but it was based on Nigel Mansell's Ferrari model. But I painted it in McLaren colours. So I'm getting rivet counted in the chat, Dave. <laughs> oh, no. It's just so wrong. That's <laughs> right. Uh, Lynn's going, we need to do that for Telford. Oh, yeah. Could you imagine that? Uh, having, a, having a bench at Telford and every build you've done on there is the complete opposite of what it should be. I mean, it, it would. It would mess with people, wouldn't it? 
you know, that's like taking something like, I don't know, a Spitfire and doing it in Luftwaffe colours. You're going to upset people, aren't you? Um, I think there were actually some that were captured and they were painted like that. I remember the fella that did the Starship trio out of Star Trek. Do you remember? I think I've said it to you before where he'd done the Enterprise as REF. Yes. A Romula Warbird as a Japanese Zero and a Klingon ship as the BF-109 Luftwaffe colours. And he really done beautiful weathering and paint job and decals, and he got absolutely slaughtered, mate. And I thought, why? I thought it was beautiful work. What, what happened to a little bit of artistic license? Absolutely. My insane. People get upset over someone far, <laughs> far in the wrong way. Uh, they get wound up over a plastic kit, which is subject to artistic compression, and it can be tweaked here and there. Yeah, I know what you're saying, mate. Yeah. Yeah, Lynn's got something in mind for the Falcon. Bless her. Yeah, good girl. Mm. What? Uh, Muse is saying, yeah, I made a model show and table like that, all the heart attacks in one place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it's the ultimate way of getting your own back, isn't it? Because... It's just a strange scenario. I I get it, but I don't get it, if you know what I mean. And I just, it just irritates me, I'm afraid. I don't see the point. Well, whether or not that's because I'll get rivet counted a, a lot. And it, do, it does. I wouldn't say it hurts. It just pees you off. It's like, really? Come on. You've got nothing better to do. Uh, Candy Graham for Mongo says he's grinning like a madman at this brilliant concept of applying a completely inappropriate paint job to a model. Absolutely, mate. Oh, yeah. You know, when I did my Mansell Ferrari, it, it's got all the uh, Senna decals on it. It's proper McLaren uh, colours. I'll dig it out. That's it. And it, it's proper McLaren colours and all of that lot. Uh, yeah. We messed with people. Was one of those, wasn't it, Dave? It was just to try to stop the rivet counting to a degree, wasn't it? But it kind of backfired on us both, didn't it? Because we yeah. probably got rivet counted to hell on them. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, I don't think people got what we was trying to do at the time. Do any of you guys in the chat get rivet counted? And if so, what are your ways of dealing with it? You know, does it happen to you guys like it does us, or is it just YouTubers that get rivet counted? I mean, from what I remember years ago with model making clubs, is you would have inter club rivalries, wouldn't you, that would get a bit silly every now and then but yeah he broke a tree on our railway diode deliberately sabotaged it it's like really just get some glue and stick it on uh, i think i said this one before i was i was at um newbury race course a few years ago now and it was, yeah it was the colors thing it was the the big the big tabletop you know gaming community oh right yeah um you know, you know you look at some of the um i don't know if you should call them dioramas or not but the the bases that they use are absolute some of them are absolutely stunningly well but done yes and i was watching this these guys it was the they were doing a a desert campaign during the Second World War. Yeah. And one bloke rolled the dice. One rolled naturally, and the other one rolled and was lent up against a building. 
Yeah. So it was it was showing two different numbers, you know. That's oh like, right, yeah. So it could have been interpreted either way, yeah. Yeah. And the conversation between these two was getting how can I say quite passionate about all right. That, um one was saying, oh, it was whatever number it was because that was the closest to being on top. And the other one said, no, you've got to re-roll that because that's not that's not right. It's good. And I thought, hang on a minute, guys. Yeah. It's only a game. And I was about to say this, and, and I looked at them, and they, was, they were getting quite um sort of... Larry? And, well, they weren't getting Larry, but they were... Very much um, getting quite emotional about it. Really? <laughs> it's probably wow. the best way of putting it. The, the faces were going red and, and the tempers were starting to fly. And I thought, yeah, you don't really want to go and say that, mate. You just. It is uh, mad, isn't it? And it was like, David, just, just walk away. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you see grown men having a push me, shove you contest at a model show, it's like, really, guys? Come on. Oh, it, it hadn't quite got that far, but uh, handbags were very much on the floor. <laughs> Proper Wibblekins, then, was it? Oh, it, oh, it was, it was, it was a full Monty, you know. Uh, Malcolm's asking you, was it a dicey conversation, Dave? Uh, well, for them, it was. For me, I just thought I'm going to get out of here quick. <laughs> Could say it was spot on, Malcolm. Yeah, see what I did there. Yeah, can someone order my coat? I was thinking it's just a game, you know. Don't you know? Don't stress it. It's hmm. yeah. I don't understand it. it... Like I say, it's a hobby, isn't it? Let's be honest. And, uh, you know, we're trying to encourage the next generation to come into this hobby because, you know, it is at risk otherwise of dying out, isn't it? Mm. And how are you supposed to encourage children to take this hobby up when they see grown-ups acting like, yeah. Pillows. Yeah. You know, how's that going to inspire them? Because we do live in a bit of a snowflake society now, don't we? Where people get upset over the slightest indiscretion. Throw that into the mix. And I can't see modelers doing model competitions in a decade. Because no one's going to want to hurt their feelings, are they? Oh, it's not fair. Well, we better give him a winner's prize for coming third because we don't want to upset him. Um, oh, okay, you know what I mean? It's gone the opposite way, isn't it? It's there are no so, winners and there are no losers, everybody gets a prize. Oh, yeah, right. you know, it's the taking part that matters, and you've got three blokes having a fight because they're like, But mine was better than yours, I should get the gold, and it's like, Oh, really? <coughs> And I don't think the plastic modelling world is as bad as some of the other branches of the hobby. <coughs> I still think we've got a long way to catch up for the railway guys, because I think some of them can be really brutal, can't they? It's the wrong colour rust. Wait, well, pardon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, your trees are not to scale. Uh, it hasn't grown fully yet. That would be my comeback. You show me an in-scale one-to-one tree and I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's strange, though, isn't it, how people get obsessed? I mean, I can remember once seeing someone lean over with a ruler to measure a figure on someone's dio, just to sort of, yeah, that's in-scale. You know, and you're like, oh, that's a bit extreme, isn't it? But, yeah. And he wasn't a judge. He was just an average Joe that was, yeah. Might have been that he was interested because he was building one, but it just seemed an odd thing to do to me. Yeah. I don't quite know how I would have taken that. Yeah. 
not very nice if he had damaged the piece. That would have been a, there's a prescription for a dry slap. Go queue up over there with a the bloke with a hat and he'll uh, apply said dry slap. I know I've got another light on there somewhere, but do you think I can find it? Uh, what's that one? Oh, there it is. Die first. All right. Yeah, yeah, I'm just uh, going over my light LED bulbs <laughs> with a bit of uh, IPA to get paint off because they had a, a coat of the old liquid mask on them, you know, and... I stuck a lighting kit in this, didn't I? So, yeah. I'm like, yeah, there's bulbs under there somewhere. I mean, it's been stuck on there for months and months, isn't it? So, yeah, it's just a bit, a bit stubborn. But the cocktail stick is getting duly applied to said bulbage. Mm, right. Ah. <coughs> uh... What, what was that candy gram saying there? Oh, someone the uh, vamp's going. He's going to go out of his way to paint a US tank in a drift missile paint and livery job. And uh, hey, baby, uh, Dio's ready for passenger seat for the rivet counters. <laughs> candy gram saying, I've seen the same thing at tabletop games, and it's just sad. People who argue dice rolls are types that forget the whole idea of a game is to have fun with your friends. Paul Lines is saying, my seven-year-old daughter's just painted a Spitfire in her own colour scheme of gold, blue, red and pink, and the photos have never have, have had, sorry, over 1,200 great reactions on Facebook. Happy days, mate. Glad to see it and all. Muse is saying, her kids are all artsy types, and they all do something from drawing to music, and her grandkids are starting with simple models and Lego. Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with being creative, you know. It's It was one of those when I did my first cat build, I was really dubious about mm. releasing it because I just thought it was going to open up a whole mountain of hate for me, you know what I mean? And those that know me well know my demons side. So they didn't want me to expose myself to that, you know, but... It was one of them, and I thought, oh, well, if it goes down like a lead balloon, I'll just pull the video. And actually, it, it went down okay. I was surprised. It went down better than you thought it would because you was worried that you was going to upset the star. Uh, I was going to say Star Trek. Star yeah, I mean, I made a point of saying to people, you know, this isn't being made as a dig at anyone. This is just me trying to look at something that is sci-fi and trying to put it into a real world environment because that's how my mind works you know yeah. if it were around now what would it be utilized as and that's what i tried to do and i think that may have helped because i had taken the time to explain my reasons i suppose but you shouldn't have to should you really and it's the same for the thunderbird twos that we did yeah I did the same with the ATST that I did as a swap. You know, it was, yeah, you know, I know it's different, but if it were around, could it be used as this? You know, it's. Yeah, I did mine in digital camera and I can't find it now. Uh, yeah, it's a bit like my Gundam, isn't it? <laughs> but that was another thing, you know, I got a little bit rivet counted on with the Gundam Sniper, you know, and I said, but I've chose to do it as this. And then, like, you do realise it's a 60-foot suit with a man in it. So you do realise they're not real. So I said at the beginning, I know that I know that the anime and all of that lot, but I just thought if it was a soldier wearing protective armour, would it be able to be seen as a concept, you know? And that's how my mind worked, you know, that it was an average-sized man in it rather than a little... 
dude in a big fighting suit, you know. But yeah, it's nice to do something slightly different, I think. There's nothing wrong with being slightly off the wall every now and again. Well, for me, my ultimate challenge, and we've said this before, and I think I nearly made you drop your paint last time, so I'll prepare you. Uh, my ultimate challenge would be to do something only out of box. Uh, yeah, you all right, Dave? <coughs> oh, and yeah, I, I, uh, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, no, because it is. It's something that I've not really done because I've always been a bit different. Faster. With what I'm trying to do. Same sentence. Oh. I know. Did try to warn you, mate. Uh, yeah, it's. I like Vampy's idea, though. That would be funny. For some reason, I've just got the Bentley in mind. Uh, yeah, Lynn's going, yeah, don't forget the uh, head of the cat wanted to buy it from me. Yeah, um, I had an, uh, an email off uh, a chat when I built the original one uh, before I did the e-models cat. And he said, oh, can I show it to me boss? I went, yeah, no worries. Could go off and show it to your boss. I don't mind. Is he a modeler? And he went, sort of. And I thought nothing of it. And then he got in touch. He said, oh, my boss laughed, loved it, sorry. I went, oh, that's nice. Where'd you work? And he went, Caterpillar. <laughs> I was like, oh. He said he loves it. And I said, well, I'll send him one. <laughs> but yeah. And like I say, you know, those those living in the UK, if you want to see one, I built one for the guys up at E-Models, and it's on display at their um, shop. Candygram's going, yeah, it's just the classic. It's always great to see ingenuity and originality and model builds. Oh, yeah, I mean, I love Cynical Steve's stuff that he does with oh, his, something else. his Greebly box builds and his, his stuff. I love that because, again, it's it's nice to um, to see it, you know. <laughs> Sarah Jane's going, what you two did to Thunderbird 2 was sacrilegious. Oh. Less. I did keep it green and went for US Army. I tried to be subtle, but I kind of I kind of got carried away and did a sharp mouth because I was looking at the Huey and it's got a sharp mouth. And yeah. Uh oh bless her. Lynn still goes back and re-watches the cat cat build. Oh bless you. Cheers, Lynn. Yeah, it is one of those. I mean, it sat to me left there in the in the display cabinet, and I'm glad I did it. You know, I've built what, two now. I've been asked to do another one for someone else, but it's a bit like the bus. Once you've done a few, you do you do get a bit, oh, mm. you know. But no, I mean, Dave's got a bus, and I said to him, you know, you're going to thoroughly enjoy it. I must admit, I I did a re-edit on all the bus videos um, recently, and. Even I sat there, started watching some of it because I'd forgotten how I had done some of the effects. So, yeah. Um, Muse is going, ha-ha, you never. Yeah. Muse is going, even her McCall laughed at that, Cole. <laughs> uh, Archie's going, is that why it's called a cat? Uh, correct, Archie. The clue's in the name, mate. Uh, it's an ATAT, -AT, but it's based on a caterpillar plant equipment, hence C A T C A T cat cat.
Uh, Kevin Stevens is saying, come on, you horrible little lot. Give them a thumbs up. Oh, mate. Yeah, it does mean a lot. Uh, for those that don't know, you get thumbs ups on your videos. It it just pushes it up the search rankings because, you know, if they go people liked it, then they're happy. But, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down. We're used to it, Dave, didn't we, mate? News is going never wasted agreeably for sure. If, if you're going to give us a thumbs down, press it twice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because if you don't press it twice, it doesn't register. But no, it does. It help, it helps with the search rankings on uh, the YouTubes. YouTubes. Trying to think what else I need to be doing on the Huey. <sighs> it's getting close, Dave, in it, eh? Get rid of the fingerprints on the windows at some point. That would be a start. Paint the tips of the missiles as well. But yeah, Fraser bought one of these, didn't he, recently off the back of what we've been doing. And it's it's nice that people have gone out and got these because they're a good little kit. Well, no, no. Personally, I don't see anything wrong with it. All right. The, the detail or the level of detail on it is not as the same as some of the kits you get there today, but... Some people not heard the expression scratch build. Yeah, but it's what makes it appealing though, isn't it? It's it was just one of those iconic helicopters, wasn't it, the Huey? You know, it's you know, we've all grown up watching them Vietnam films and, and things of that nature and it just resonates, doesn't it? It's big and it's green. Yeah. Go. Oh, you're all right, Dave. Yeah. I've been adding the same position and the next time starting to seize up a little bit. Uh yeah, I mean we're coming up to six o'clock anyway, mate. I mean that went quick. I know. I know, mate. It's up to you. If you want to go for a bit longer, we'll go for a bit longer. I don't mind. Oh, I don't. I'm quite happy. Uh, go to half past, then, if you want. Yep. We've got Chris on later, haven't they? As far as I know, is it Chris day today? Yeah, it's Wednesday, isn't it? It's his midweek, mid, uh, midweek makings, I do believe. Something like that. What's he making this time? Uh, I don't know, mate. I know one thing he won't be making because we've not said what we're going to be doing next. Oh yeah, oh secret squirrel. Yeah, we got uh, we got that. We, we're going to be doing a, a Friday stream soon, but we're not going to say what we're doing until you tune in. Yeah, because it's different. It's not diamond art. That's something totally different that we got planned. But this is just something that we're going to be doing. We're going to go through stages, Dave, aren't we? Where we're going to introduce little different genres. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So we've spotted something. And I grabbed mine. Yours has arrived now as well, isn't it? Yeah, it came yesterday. So, uh, yeah, we've got something that we're going to do that is uh, going to be... 
fun to assemble and also it's going to be useful when it's assembled yeah yeah a really useful thing yeah it's a thing we're going to be using mm. actually quite looking forward to that one yeah I was looking at it earlier, Dave, you know, and it was like, yeah, that's... I take it you've opened yours? No, still got the same thing around the box. Oh, mate, yeah, you, you, you know, have a, have a peek inside, mate. You'll see how, how well made it is. It's really a nice piece, mate. Am I allowed to peek inside? Because I thought it was uh, open it on the day when we... Oh, uh, no, I opened mine to show you what was in it, didn't I? All right, then. I'll, I'll have a look later, then. Because you was inquiring, weren't you? So, yeah. I will have a openage whilst I am in between sticking up his own stuff together. Yeah. Oh, was that a little segue into your latest purchase, was it, Dave? Hmm, possibly. <laughs> I saw what you did there. I saw what you did there. Um, I might have purchased some more hobby zone. Oh, mate, it's all about the hobby zone. It's a good purchase, mate. Very good purchase. Actually means I will be able to finish off the hobby zone section of my bench refit. Oh man. I'm still not taking down them scuzzy photos though. Don't want you to. <laughs> no, leave them up there because then people can see the difference between the two and it might help them make the decision of whether they will or won't absolutely i'm just going to go and get my uh mclaren oh. for claren that's it back talky 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 hello yeah that's all right it's just i got my fbi earpiece thing in i didn't know whether i had plugged it in properly oh you've got an ear wig in have you uh yeah because my hearing aid prescription needs re redoing and Normally, if it's coming out the speakers, I struggle to hear, as you know. Uh, so I got myself an earpiece to uh, amplify it up for a sound card in my PC so that I can mm -hmm. and hear my little cherub's dulcet tones. Yeah, there's the, there's the Nigel Mansell Ferrari that caused me so much controversy. Mm -hmm. I think it was a classic. And, uh, yeah, it's done as the uh, McLaren, so, yeah. <laughs> and if Sergeant Bones is watching this back, Dave, I know full well I'm going to be getting the look. So, oh, yeah. yeah. And it's fun doing something like that because the irony of it was was the pair of us were sat giggling in the hangout whilst we was painting them, wouldn't we, Dave? And he kept looking at us both going, what are you two laughing at? And we're like, it all, all will be revealed soon. And then when we um, when we showed him the look he gave oh, us, Dave. He was not happy. It was what's oh, fudge sticks funny, wasn't it? Yeah, it was hilarious because he just, he said, I'm not disappointed in you i'm disappointed for you <laughs> but yeah and uh vamp he's going yeah that's all kinds of wrong mate but he loves it yeah i mean i 
yeah, you know, I mean, I've got the full size Mansell Ferrari in my lounge, the big one that they done in the nineties, cost me an arm and a leg, and that's done as the Ferrari. Yeah, you know, the great big, huge one they did, you know, and I've seen what they're going on the flea bay for, and it's phenomenal. And I've got that, and I've got the Mario Andretti Lotus as well on display in there of the same size. But but yeah, Vam, honestly, mate, I mean, where these were chipper little little kits, you know, and uh, what better thing to do than do the iconic Mansell Ferrari, but as out and send as McLaren, because Sarge blessing was, yeah, Ferrari, you know, if you snap him in half, he bleeds to Fosy Red. Mm. And whilst he's saying this, I'm sitting here putting the decals on this, <laughs> thinking he's going to kill me. And he looked at me and he said, you do realise, he said, despite you having MS, he said, I'm going to get on a ferry from Germany. He said, I'm going to come a bitch slap you all round your house. So I was like, yeah, no worries. You're most welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but he took it well. I'll give him that. He took the gag well, didn't he? But me being me, I posted it in a Facebook group and I had a few people that were, how can we say, in the group giving out sort of advice and their, their wealth of knowledge. And one of them was like, oh, yeah, great, you know, center this, center that. I really got an But you do realize it's Mc, uh, Mansell's Ferrari. I'm no longer in that group. <clears throat> you do surprise me. But hey, you know, each to their own. Let them go. But, yeah, it was just a fun thing to do. But so much so that we we are trying to think of what the next one is, aren't we? And and Vampy coming up with that oh, idea, I'm, I must admit, I like that. And if you want in Vamp, you're more than welcome, mate. Um, I think I think the, the Vampy's idea has has certainly got a little bit of mileage to it. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Muse is saying she's got three ZZ top cars sat there. Who are two of them going to? I know. She's a darling. Uh, Sarah Jane, bless her. She says, been a motorsport fan. I'm finding it very difficult to like that, joking. I've got the full range of Tamiya 112 F1 cars. Oh, wow. Good for you. Ooh. It's a bit like me doing Mark Marquez's Honda in Valentino Rossi's colours, isn't it? It would go down like a lead balloon, mate. Um, so much so, that actually. Yeah. Yeah, but it would be someone like me that would do that. Yeah, I mean, for me, that's the ultimate sacrilege because, you know, I'm a bit of a Rossi fanboy, but uh, he's past his best now, let's be honest. But, mate, at 41, still riding a motorbike like he does. Happy days, mate. I've got a picture to send you later, Dave, actually. Uh, I might have it on my phone now. I'll do it if it comes to it on air. And it'll be um, a picture of last weekend's race. Yeah, I've got it. I'll send it to you. Um, this guy done, I think it was a 70-degree lean angle, which to me is a motorcycle accident. Well, and if you just look at his arm on the curb of the corner, you'll realise that he's got his whole... And it's Fabio Quattararo from last week's race at Catalonia. And, you know, a lot of riders got their knee down, then it was elbow down. He's got the whole of his left arm rubbing on the curb as he's going around this corner and I looked at the footage and I'm like, whoa, yeah. Because honestly, you'd walk past it in the street and you think his motorbike just fell over there. Uh, Lynn saying, oh, can you give me one of those ZZ cars, Muse? <laughs> and she's saying if she can get another one. Yeah. How did that bike not disappear from underneath him? I know. It's all to do, Dave, with the modern tyre technologies, mate, on the motorbikes oh, yeah. now. They've they've increased the grip surface of the slick tyre to incorporate some of the sidewall. So, you know, 70, yeah, 70 degree uh, lean angle. Uh, Sarah Jane saying, yeah, Rossi's signed for Petronas. Yeah, he's got another year. He's still going. I love it. I mean, I've said 
couple of weeks ago, Sarah Jane, the ideal thing for me with Valentino would be if he retires at 46. And part of me still thinks that's what he's trying to do, that he wants to go to retire at his own race number as his age type of thing, you know. And he's 41 now. He'll be 42, 43 time that contract ends. So if he gets another two-year deal and then does his own GP team, what better way? Sarah Jane says, I can lean like that while having an accident, though. Yeah, I did that lean angle on the Alton Road when I was knocked over, but yeah. Muse is going, it's magic, that's how. It is, it's... I, I introduced Dave to MotoGP by showing him the last lap of the 2009 Catalonia race with Lorenzo and Rossi, and it was... Oh, yeah. And I've always been hooked on two wheel racing predominantly, and that was my baptism in uh, Grand Prix. It was Barry Sheen, Kenny Roberts at Silverstone, and I remember it vividly, you know. And yeah, when I did a lot of photography stuff, I used to go to Brands Hatch quite a lot. I'd love to see the motorbikes and Formula One cars go around Brands Hatch, but it'll never happen. I, I saw, um. It wasn't, um, you know, the, the, the top motorcyclists. Yeah. Yeah. But I was, um, I got myself positioned very quite nicely at um, the apex of Druids. Oh, right. Yeah. And the light was kind of fading a little bit because it's starting to get cloudy. Yeah. And one one of the guys came round and he got his bike so low that you could hear his pegs scraping on the on the tarmac and I caught it just right. I was quite pleased with myself. Yeah. You could see the sparks coming up. <laughs> proper then. Oh yeah, he was he proper lent lent it over. He he was he was giving it the the I'm gonna lean this right over. Yeah. Yeah, I will lean this bike over and it will comply. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, I love watching the bikes. I must admit it's phenomenal. And it is, you know, to be, you know, there, you know, there are haters of Rossi out there. You know, he's done, he's, he's upset a few people over the years, but put all of that to one side, you can't fault what he's done for the sport. Hmm. Yeah, are his best years behind him? Of course they are. And he's not trying to say that he's something he isn't. He, he enjoys his racing. All the time he's enjoying it, he's going to do it. And he, he knows the time, when the time is for to retire, because he'll feel it. Yeah, He'll yeah. feel it's the right time. But he says for him now, it's just the taking part is the thing. He enjoys it. He enjoys being competitive as best as he can be. He knows that he's not as fast as he was 15 years ago, but then he's a lot older. You know, and he will have his own MotoGP team, and I look forward to that, and I'm hoping the rumours are true and that he's going to be using Suzuki's mm -hmm. because I think that would be brilliant. So hopefully them rumours are true because Yamaha Factory and Patronus, they're both using the Yamaha. Suzuki's only got two bikes on the grid and they've been wanting to put they've been wanting to put a satellite team out. Well Rossi wants to, to move or start his VR forty six team in Moto GP as well. He's got it in Moto three and Moto two, but he's yet to start a team in Moto GP and he's always said he won't do it all the time he's racing which is understandable. Mm -hmm. But when he retires, obviously Yamaha aren't going to put six bikes on the grid, are they? So it looks like he'll probably use Suzuki's, and I think that'll be a blinder. I think that'll be a blinding choice. So, yeah. Will he do well at running the team? No one knows, do they? We'll find out when he starts. Well, he must be doing something all right if he's in other formulas. Exactly. 
and I can see uh, Frankie Morbidelli and his uh, stepbrother Luca Marini being his riders in that team. So yeah, I look forward to it. But uh, no, he's done a lot for the sport. But as he, you know, and he freely admits that you know the next generation of riders have come in and. You know, the baton has been firmly handed over. So, yeah. fair play to him, you know. And... We're only here for a short while, so we need to hand the baton on as soon as we Yeah. Can. I can imagine his first, his first season of not actually being a competitive racer. Oh, that's going to be tough. Uh, yeah, because he's been doing this now in the top class since 2000. So, yeah, 96, he came into the paddock. Um, and he was a right little whipper, whipper snapper, jumped up, little upstart. And, and Graziano, his dad, is the ultimate tie-dyed T-shirt hippie that was three parts stoned, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, yeah. mm. Always came across as that uh, Italian way of whatever, <laughs> you know? And I've got two bikes up up on my stash. And I'm going to do them as a pair when Valentino retires. And one's going to be his father's bike in his colours. And the other one's going to be his. And they're just going to be side by side on a, on a little vignette. And I must admit, I'm looking forward to doing them as a pair. Also got the Joey Dunlop one to do as well. Another legend that was sadly taken from us far too young. But hey. Yeah, how many times is that door gonna fall off faster before you actually glue it on? Oh, he's got another two dozen to go at least at least. Yeah, it's the side doors. You know how great they are for staying on. Yeah, I think I'm going to be putting those in with a bit of um, PVA. Just a while. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put. I've got some contact to clear there. Because uh, I've been doing the frames and that, I've been popping it on, popping it off, popping it on, and I keep leaving it on, and then lifting up the helicopter to turn it over, and the door goes ping. We can have a bit of, bit of Scuzzy McScuzzville down there. Mm. I've got one door up. Deliberately trying not to move my chair in a way that rolls over the door because I can't see where it went. And you'll hear that distinctive crunch when you know, they'll be like, Ready? I found that door. Ah, where, did, where did that go? Oh, there it is. That'd be right. Found it. Found it. Yeah, it was under my foot. That's where it always is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't be light faster. Uh contact to clear. Let's get some of that out cold. Pop that in there. It's done then, mate. Yeah. I don't know why I have a pot of Vaseline in my copy zone drawer there, don't I? I'm sure you have it there for a reason. Uh, yeah. Not quite it, sure why. Probably best left to yourself. <laughs> only at the weekends, Dave. Only at the weekends. Each to their own. <laughs> I worry about you, you know. 
I worry about me as well. <laughs> there you go. Well, I think. There's only a tiny little bit of dry brushing left on that, and it's done. Oh. That's a worry, isn't it? Ding dong. Oh, I didn't want that door to go on anyway. Oh, is it Wibblekins? What's that, the side door? Yeah. Put it on at a 45 degree angle, Dave. Bot bottom, in bottom inch first, pop that in. 45 degree angle, top hinge in, and then pull the top back and it'll pop in. Yep, done it. Yeah? Yep, we're in. I know that because I've put mine in and out. So that sound is wrong. Put mine in, uh, my door in quite a few times now. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to let that one go. <laughs> well, I'm going to switch cam and catch up with a bit of the old chat before we go. So I'm just going to pop back onto normal camera. Yeah, select. That's the right one, Carl. There you go. That's easy. Right, let's have a, a little looky loo at the chattykins. Play a bit of catch up. Ah, right. Uh, Sarah Jane, the motorsport one. Yeah, Vamps going. Jumps up and down like a clown at Muse. Yeah, I know. Uh, you're like me, Vamp. You're all excited because you've got the ZZ Top car. It's, like, it's one of those kits I remember building as a youngster. And when I left home, I left home uh, quickly. And I just, just never didn't get around to going back for the stuff. And I'd left it in a lockup and it had flooded. And Yeah, my, my bad. Uh, Muse is laughing out loud. Lynn's still pleading for one of those ZZ cars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Vamps going, yep, yeah, pleasure, Carl. Ha <laughs> ha, of course I'd want in. Just need a kit for it, though. Yeah, no worries, Vamp. Um, there's going to be no rush. We'll probably do something in the new year then for that, Dave. What do you reckon? What's that? The um, buy something oh. and tote, yeah, buy a motor or whatever and, and do it totally inappropriate. Or, or do we just open it up and say it can be any kit, but you cannot paint it in the paint scheme it comes is, you know, if it's a if it's an aircraft and it was a British aircraft, you've got to do it as the enemy and vice versa. If it's a, a racing car you that say done as Mansell, you've got to do it as his main rival or Schumacher would have to be if Schumacher's car would have to be done as Damon Hills, wouldn't it? Oh, yes. You know, yeah. that sort of thing. And you Opposite know, if it's yeah, if it's yeah, the opposites attract. So if it's a motorbike and it's I don't know Valentino Rossi, then you've got to do it as Lorenzo's or Marquez's, or if it's a Yamaha, you've got to do it as the Honda. And yeah, so I think we can open it up, can't we? I, th I think there's there's a, a lot of mileage for that one because um, yeah, because perhaps not everyone's going to want to be a car builder, are they? So yeah. no, would you want to do it as a group build and? and do something like that i don't know i think a group build would be a really good idea because it will get everybody at home involved as well yeah so if people um, people want to do something then uh we could sort it out yeah do um do a group build call it something like opposites attract any scale any model mm. just so long as it's the opposite of what it should be yeah what I do think people, that works. What do people in the chat think about that? Archie's going, I have to say, Lynn, you can't beat a bit of British engineering, though. It's uh, Spitfire is on about there. Lynn's going, yeah, Archie, I need to get and build a Spitfire. She hasn't built one yet. It's all right, Lynn, you're not alone. Neither have I, darling. I've built an hurricane. I've got my first Spitfires just above my head there which is the Iron Maiden Aces High. It's going to be my first ever Spitfire. Ooh, I know. 
Well, mine will be my first ever Spitfire in 30 seconds, Joe. Absolutely. Uh, Music saying, may as well finish it at that angle. <laughs> Sarah Jane saying about Valentino for another year. Absolutely. Uh, Archie saying he's trying to build a Spitfire that's actually good for once. Oh, bless, mate. Hey, mate, as long as it looks right for you, mate, then it's right. Don't worry about it, buddy. It's one of them. Finish, as long as you're happy with what you're finished with, that's the main thing. Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. What anybody else says or thinks is immaterial. Uh, Sarah Jane's uh, saying that she was at Brands in 86. The last time F1 was there, Senna was in his JPS Lotus. Oh, yeah. yeah. I always remember the wet, 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 oh, wet, wet, the wet weather race that he did. Uh, was it European Grand Prix at Donington? Oh, mate. Nice. Masterclass. Munchkin Modeling Man 72 says, Morning, Colin. How's it been, sir? Been fine and dandy, mate. Your good self. I hope everything's all right, mate. Lynn Dipple's going, yep. Yeah, she built a JPS Lotus back in the 80s. Yeah, I did mine in the 90s. I did the Mario Andretti one. And uh, then my missus for my, I think it might have been my 21st birthday, bought me the big Mansell Ferrari. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was like, yeah. Raging Modeler's in. All right, dudes. Hello, Raging. How you doing? He is the Hi, cake, Raging. the cake whisperer. Oh, what cake have you got? Yeah. Munchkin's, uh, Munchkin's saying hello to Vampy. Uh, Vamp saying, yeah, that was years ago, Sarah. Yeah. Brands Hatch is one of them circuits in it that you... Uh, you really would love to see modern motor racing uh, be hosted on this. Um, I, the last visit I had to Brands was when they was doing the German DTM. Oh, right, yeah. The, the shame of it was they was only ever allowed to do it around the indie circuit. The 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 NIMBYs that live all back on to... The yeah, the locals, yeah, all complained, didn't they? They didn't, they didn't want the noise. Yeah, it's too noisy. Why did you buy an house next to a motor racing track then? Exactly. You know, that's like me me building an house in the middle of Silverstone and going, can you turn the sound of them engines down a bit? Only I'm struggling to uh, listen to me telly. It's like, well, why I live there then? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Munchkin saying hello to Lynn. Asking how it's going, Paul Lyons is going, and what he knows about racing, he'll know to what to look for in a great rider. Yeah, he, he's got his academy, isn't he? I mean, uh, Morbidelli's from the academy. Um, yeah, Bagnaya, is it Rins? You know, they've all been through there, and yeah. Uh, Munchkin say, finally been out to make a live feed. Yay! Absolutely, mate. You've got seven more minutes of us two reprobates, mate. So uh, <laughs> I'll ask us anything, mate, and uh, we'll do our, in, in, you know, our best to answer you, mate. Uh, Vamp saying good and yourself, bruv. Uh, Sarah Jane's going 86. Yes, I'm old, I know. No, you're not old. Not old at all. We just level up each year now, but we just hide the level from the rest of the players. Uh, music saying we are all old. That's the year I graduated high school. Absolutely, hey. Oh. Well, I was born in '67. You, you're only a couple of years older than me, Dave, aren't you? Yeah, '64. '64. There you go. Uh, Vamp saying, oh, he's a git, and he he was eight years old back then. Oof. He's only a pup, isn't he? Eh? Yeah. Uh, Munchkin graduated in the 90s. Uh, music saying, and he reminds me that I'm robbing the cradle. Oh, he accuses you of being a cradle snatcher, does he, Muse? Yeah, but yeah, you know, it's nice to have a toy boy love, isn't it? Good for you. 
Lynn's saying, Sarah Jane, you're not old. Try 1963. Lynn's 56. Yeah, but you're only a pup, Lynn. We're only pups, darling. Uh, Sarah Jane saying she's going to get a Zimmer frame soon and leave. <laughs> I'll send you up a pair of my sticks if you want them, darling. Is that with Go Faster Stripes? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bam's going, no, nah, don't do that. Sarah Jane's doing the Barry Sheen and uh, Yamaha at the moment. He was a legend. Yeah, I've got the Barry Sheen, Kenny Roberts uh, dio just sat to me left there that I did over on to channel. And I thoroughly enjoyed doing it. It was, yeah, quite a poignant build, if I remember rightly. I was a bit, yeah, I was a bit, bit choked, like, you know, doing that end that end episode after the reveal, because you're talking about someone that sadly died, you know, and you're like, well, you know. Uh, Candy Graham saying, I think I built that same kit. Uh, to me, a JPS Lotus around 80 at Lynn Dipple. Badly messed up the paint on it due to an accident with paint thinner and was sad for a long, long time. Yeah. Ooh, not well, yeah, I mean, I did mine back in the 90s, and... Dare I say it, they are kits that you would like to take down off the display, strip them down a bit, and then go in and hyper-detail them, because we've all learned different skills mm. since, haven't we? And it's bringing them up using your modern techniques, because I built them way back when, and I didn't have the gear I've got now and that. So, yeah, it's I am tempted to de-decal them strip them right down and completely redo them dave but my only concern is decal sets but then i could print my own couldn't i well yeah you could do your own so paul lyon's going in uh, i've turned 40 this year i act like a 10 year old and feel like an 80 year old yet yeah, i'm i'm yeah. seven i'm 76 years old with my mobility but i'm 12 and a half with my mind i like just been a child i can't help it my missus often says grow up and i'm like but why it's boring being a grown-up yeah instead of old why not use mad eccentric is what i go for i'm a man of a certain age and my eccentricities are more apparent slightly left of center absolutely but don't you find dave that as you get older your quiet voice becomes loud I don't know whether any of you in the chat that are of our generation, 60s births, but whereas before, if someone run over your foot with a shopping trolley, you in the back of your mind would go, Jesus, dagnamit, and blisters. Whereas now you blurt it out, don't you? You know, and you'll mm -hmm. say to the person, well, are you blind? Did you not see this six foot 18 stone man in your way, you burp? And you just launch, yeah. Yeah, my my comment normally is, um, what part of what what part of did I get in your way? Yeah, you know, let me know and I'll get out your way. Oh yeah, I've had it before when we go out and about. As you know, I use sticks rather than my wheelchair because I just don't want to use the wheelchair. And uh, you'll be pottering along, and you'll hear someone behind you like Skippy because they want you to get a move along. And I look and I stop and I just go. I'm really sorry that I don't walk as fast as you'd like me to, but by all means, just walk around me, you mug. Mm. And then my missus goes, calm down. And I'm like, well, he started it. <laughs> and then I get told off. Yeah. Uh, what have we got? Uh, just jumped up there. Yeah. It, laugh out loud, Dave. We all worry about you. <laughs> That's a point, folks. What was the first kit you ever built in chat? Osrich is saying, you don't have to be mad to be here, but it's much more fun. Absolutely, mate. Yeah. You know, without you guys tuning in, uh, listen to our inane drivel, you know, we do this, these sort of things for you guys just to keep you company because the world's in a strange place, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's on fire and it's... Yeah, Lynn's going. Uh, I have them built the Eb 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 Ebro Lotus in 72, JPS last year. We're having twins. She's a proper petrol head, isn't she, Sarah? Mm -hmm. uh, da -da -da -da. 
muses a vamp saying, Cole, put a Lotus V12 in that in that Huey, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Laugh out loud, Cal. Yeah. Sure the door, right? Yeah. Lynn says she's in for that. Yeah. Vamp is going, yeah, December group build. Uh, yeah. Lynn saying awesome. I mean, you could do it. I mean, I know the the Australians have a a thing down there where you're either a fold man or you're a holden man. You know, there's that real staunch rivalry between the two. And could you imagine doing a fold in holden colours or or vice versa? Yeah, holden in fold colours. I mean, that's like doing Richard Petty's NASCAR in his competitors' livery, isn't it? People are going to go. Oh, that's King Richard Petty's car. You've, yeah. Kenny Roberts' motorcycle with Barry Sheen's number on it, that sort of thing. You know. Yeah. Uh, Vamp's going, yeah, that'll pee a few people off. I think it will. Mm. Muse is saying she's got to figure out how to get the motorhead airfix over to Vamp. Yeah, it's a nice kit, though, Muse, isn't it? Oh, yeah. We got them in up there as well, Dad, Dave. We've got the iron course with an H. Uh, <laughs> I like that one, Sarah Jane. Do Hamilton's car painted as the Titanic? That'll stop him winning. <laughs> oh yeah, I like your thinking there. I think they should put square tires on his. Absolutely, and Vamp's got the perfect answer for Muse. Uh, box it up and post it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Archie saying, What's the best way to fix custom wiring to the inside of a cockpit? Well, if you can do it out of sight, out of mind, a bit of CA or a bit of hot glue or a bit of contact to clear, mate. Depends, depends on what the wiring can, can, uh, mm. you know, what it's made of. Is it real wires? Is it sleeved wires? Is it plastic coated? Uh, yeah, I normally just put a tiny little bit of ob hot glue in an area that won't be seen and woof, in it goes oh my god raging modeler was up he was born the year i left school dave 1982 i hate you now i left in 80 yeah I, 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 well i wanted to stay on but they the teacher just said the gate is that way. Oh, uh, yeah. My teacher said, Look, we won't object if you no longer come into school. I'm like, Really? I went, Yeah, you know. Mm. We'll just mark you down as attending, but it would be much better if, you know, for both parties, if you just didn't bother coming back. Yeah. So I just went out and got a job and then got found out that I was underage and didn't have a work permit. Yeah. Mm. So that was. On a labouring on a building site, so it's like yeah, that'll do. Uh, Munchkin is a seventy-two baby. Colton Bennett, Nat was ninety-one. Ninety-one. She's not much older than my boy. She's Ding not... dong! I feel really old now. She's not even properly grown up yet. No, I feel really old now. I've got to get my bottom lip out, Dave. It's not fair. I think Archie's trying to, trying to pull a fast one here. He's saying he's 18. <laughs> yeah. Pull the other one, mate. It might start ringing. <laughs> yeah, Muse, Muse is going, it's a trap, mate. Never grow up. No, I try. I tried being a mature parent for a couple of years when I used to take my boys to school, but oh, I couldn't. You know, I tried and I failed miserably and I just reverted back to being a bigger child than they were. Hmm. People used to say to my Ella, how many kids you got? She used to go three, and I go, good girl. <laughs> uh, Archie says he's an old man in an 18-year-old body. Yeah, my youngest boy's like that. He's 24, but if I bought him a flat cap, I know he'd wear it. He's proper compo, Dave, you know. And he can wibble far better than us two put together, mate. Really? Oh, Yeah. Hey, proper has a good old whinge and wine, mate. He sits, he sits there, kid. He from you or, or from his mother? I think a mixture of both. He he had a wibble when I last saw him about millennials. 
Dave, honestly, I nearly popped an olive and a rib, mate. Because he was proper kicking off, you know, and he was, you know, I'm like, dude, you're worse than me when I got the news on. Kids of today, he says, I ain't got a clue. I'm like, Cal, you're 24, mate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Muse is saying the first thing she helped to build was a full train set and town with Gramps. It was his hometown and its rail system. Oh, wow. Paul Lyons' first ever kit was a 70 second Spitfire. Muse says she can't recall the actual kit. That's all right. Uh, Munchkin says his first car was a 57 Chevy police car. Oh, nice. Uh, some race car was Muse. Vamp was a F40 Ravel Ferrari from 85. Sure, mine was either a Schmidt BF109 or a Hurricane. Uh, mine was a Hurricane. But, uh, yeah, and they was only chippy ones, you know what I mean? But... Mine was an, was an Airfix one, and it was green. And then I think I got a Matchbox Wellington and some of their little diorama tank builds to do, mm. and, and that was oh, it. I was hooked. You used to love the Matchbox kits, especially the, the ones that come with a little dio on it. Can you remember doing the Woody Woodpecker bit along the seam with your snot glue, Dave, in the tube? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Lynn saying, buy Muse. Uh, Muse has got to get going. Kid needs a ride into work. Yeah, we're coming off air anyway, Muse. We're just going to be wrapping up Take once care, we've yeah. done the chat. Thanks for coming in and keeping us company. It's always a pleasure, my love. Uh, Muse is saying later all. Yeah, take care, darling. Uh, Sarah Jane saying, I didn't grow up. The rest of me did, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean... Oh, no, it's a bugger, that, isn't it? It's weird. I mean... You know, I've got mobility problems, as we know, but, you know, I'm 53, but in there, I'm still that adventurous, mischievous teenage youth that wanted to be into everything and up to everything and up to no good, you know. And I can't help, I can't help but create mischief, Dave. I love doing it. You know, my, when my missus used to take me shopping, I, if you know when you get someone that keeps getting in your way or you get the row of trolleys that blocks the aisle and you can't get through or someone will bump you with their trolley don't they to get past you like i've got my eye on you now and i would stalk them around the store and i'd go down the aisle looking for the really expensive salmons and things like that and i'd grab them and then whilst they weren't looking i'd nip up to their trolley and whop it in at the bottom of the trolley <laughs> You know, uh, you know, it could be a granddad, you know, he'd get to the count and there'd be a pack of three in there and his missus would, oh, he got them for? <laughs> and for yonks and yonks, I was getting away with it. And my two were sort of, you know, both in baby reigns back then and getting, you know, and they used to love dad being mischievous and being naughty, see. And my missus caught me doing it one day. Oh, the telling off I got. But it was great fun at the, at the till. <laughs> Because you'd say to your missus, oh, let's go to this chill. Because you knew you was going to watch the people find all the stuff that you had stuck in their trolley. And I recommend anyone should do it. If you go shopping and you've got one of them people that's got 55 packets of bog roll in their trolley and they're annoying you, have a look at them and gauge them. And if the, you know, if the other half looks a bit Amish, then just throw a packet of free in there or something they shouldn't have in the trolley or something hyper expensive and you watch them i never chose that i never put it there yeah it's great fun archie saying honestly he's 18 yeah i know you're only a pup mate yeah. my hat's older than you <laughs> damn uh vamp saying that he's 42 this year and he's feeling 21 and looking 26 <clears throat> oh he's vain in he eh? oh yeah Ah, good on you, Vamp, mate. Uh, Vamp saying he grew up with Hot Wheels, Scale Electrics, and still have all the cars and bikes. Yeah, I've got a big old Scale Electric set from when I was a lad up in the loft there, and I keep meaning to get it down. I've, I've got two up in the loft. One 
is a really old one because it's got the old um, black and red wolf. Um, yeah, you've got the one with the big transformer with the windy bits for the yeah, wires, isn't yeah, yeah. Blue, blue round one with the twiddly bits on. Show you what I'll do, Dave. When I when I manage to get it down from the loft, when I've put the new floor down in the conservatory, I'll set it up and I'll get you down and we'll have a go on the old scale electrics, mate. <laughs> Well, funny you say that because um, when my dad was alive, I'd uh, sneaked up several sets of, of, of scale extracts. And what he did when the boys went up there when they was young, he used to park the car out on the drive and he used to go in the garage and he used to make up a, a granddad's racetrack. Oh, right, yeah. And left it in the garage for him. Oh, nice! And the boys used to love it because they could go in and out and and have a race whenever they want. But you should have seen the state of the cars. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I've like I say, it's a big old set with a double loop, the loop and the spiral bits, and oh mate, it's uh, pretty massive. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'll have to do that. We'll let the world let we'll let the world smolder out and the fire go out, mate. And when it's safe to do so, we'll we'll. We'll have a we'll have a we'll have a bit of a championship, shall we? Yeah, yeah, we'll have a scab. I'll put you up for the night if you want, mate. And uh, yeah, no worries, mate. <laughs> uh, one scale electrics car apparently cost as much as a whole set did uh, back then. I don't know, mate. I've not seen. Uh, yeah. Well, no, was it? I seem to remember when I worked in the toy shop. The the for some unknown reason, and I, and I don't know why, but the world went on fire for the XR three. Scale electric set, you could yeah. not get that for love nor money. Mm. You'd be on the phone to scale electrics, and you say, Well, when are we going to get some more? Uh, we haven't made any more. No, why aren't you making any more? Because we're selling them like hotcakes. Okay, uh, well, we've done, yeah, it was a limited run, wasn't it? Yeah, I think the thing that one of them, I think it was the fact that they had the headlights and the, and the backlights. Oh, uh, yeah, it had working LEDs and all of that. It was one of the first lot that did it, wasn't it? Mm. Did they do the Volkswagen uh, GTI as well? Polo, Golf GTI. Don't remember it, but that's yeah. not the that they didn't do it. Uh, Vampy's going, oh, nice, Dave, yeah. Uh, Paul Lines has got the Mighty Metro Scale Electrics and Hornby into City 125. Yeah, I've got the old Metro 6R4 just up there from Bell Kits, and I must admit, Oh, I'm yeah, looking I'll, forward to that. One of those. Yeah, I am looking forward to doing that. Muse is going, he's a handsome beast. You can say it, but if I say it, people might think that Fester's gone a bit strange. So, uh, yeah. But, uh, no, he's a good-looking lad, is our vampy. I just wish I had as much air as him, you know what I mean? Uh, ha ha Sarah Jane, he says, yeah. Uh, Lynn saying, laugh out loud, Sarah, who's an adult here? Well, hopefully, Lynn, you are, because you're the one who used to try and talk sense into us rabble, didn't you, love? Yeah. She used to sit there trying to keep us all all, all in order, and in the end, she'd go, I'm giving up with you lot. There's no no hope for any of you. <laughs> She's not going to win doing that one. She's... She'd be sitting there rocking in her chair going. Yeah. Yeah. Bless her. Many a night we reduced Lynn to a quivering, giggling heap. <laughs> it's good fun, though. Absolutely. No, you, on a serious note, Lynn, you must ping us when you're about. And uh, I'll, I'll put a link up and play catch up. It's been too long to, that we've sat and spoke, love. And uh, yeah. Right, Dave. I think we're at that time, aren't we, now, where it's quarter to seven. It's a school night for you, and you'll be wanting to uh, go off and do your. Your food and uh, your normal... I think I might be doing some beans on toast. Nightly stuff. So Dave will be leaving me shortly anyway. So I think it's a good time to wrap up until next week, Dave, when we'll be back next Wednesday for... Paddy Wagon Week, isn't it? Paddy Wagon. Uh, I don't know how many more Hueys we're going to get, really, is four episodes, Dave. I mean, I've only got a little bit of assembly to do on the rotors. Mine's more or less done, so... Well, you can I'm, catch up as and when, and then we'll just do a reveal on one of the other shows if you want, if that's better. Yeah, I think so. I, I just need to do the masking, and then I can do the 
primer on the front and then it's just putting the um top coat on and, and doing some yeah work. as and when mate in it you know we'll see how see how we are at the end of the month with them yeah i don't, um, I don't think i can um i don't think i can <laughs> wing this one out a bit longer <laughs> No, we are at that stage with them, aren't we? I mean, I've literally got tiny bits to do now, and that's it. So, yeah, I think if I have a maybe not this weekend, but maybe next weekend, I'll have a proper session on it and, and pull my finger out and get, get caught. Trouble is, though, the pair of us don't want to finish them, do we? No, I don't. I don't know why, but. Even just looking at it now, even in its state of half plastic and half primed, it, it, yeah, it's a, it's a Huey. I mean, we can always have them on the shelf as a ongoing, maybe finished, but we might want to add something to them. I don't know. Well, yeah, a little bit of weathering here and there and such stuff. Yeah, got to be done in it. Yeah. Right, yo, then, folks. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, Look forward to seeing you on Sunday for uh, another Sunday brunch. So look out for that. Mm -hmm. I need um, to talk to you about Sunday. Uh, yeah, no worries. No worries. We'll do that off air. So there may be one. There may not be one. We don't know yet, do we? Mm. It depends on real life, which we'll chat about when we're off air. Yep. But provisionally keep an eye out for it. But there may be a miss this week. We're not sure. All right, folks, and then obviously next Wednesday, back for the paddy wagon. So it'll be Officer Fester and Officer, D uh, Officer Wibble. <laughs> wibble, wibble, wibble. So I look forward to seeing you then. And until then, thank you for joining us. Stay safe, everyone. Yeah. See you, bye -bye, see you later. Bye-bye. Look after yourselves.